So welcome everyone um, and to join us on, on this online workshop. This is actually the second in the series starting from last year. So this is jointly organized by uh, IBS EPCO Pro and Sandung University. Um, so um, the, I guess we, we would like to have the speakers uh, uh, give the talk and then, and then we will have five minutes uh, question afterwards. So our first, very first speaker uh, is Jie Han from Beijing Institute of Technology telling us something about H factors. It's all yours. Okay, mm -hmm. okay thank you. So I, I have uh, 35 minutes or 30 minutes, 35 minutes, right? Right, 35 minutes with five minutes of question. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, yeah, thank you for organizing this online workshop and thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to talk at the first. <laughs> um, so, right, today I will talk about uh, some embeddings uh, problems uh, for graphs with uh, low independence number. And uh, this is joint work with uh, uh, Chen Ming, uh, I mean Ming Chen, Huang Hui Wang, and uh, Dong Lei Yang. Um, so, what do I do? Uh, we will concern about uh, undirected uh, simple graphs. And uh, we'll talk about this F factor problems, I mean, H factor problems. And for that, an uh, important parameter we are going to use is the vertex aborcity, uh, which will be de defined as the minimum number of parts so that you can partition a VH, and namely you partition the vertex side of the graph, and so that each part induces a forest. Okay, each part induces a forest. And this, you can, for this, you can uh, can uh, compare it with the proper coloring. So proper coloring means uh, you partition them into independent set. But now for this uh, vertex arboricity, we consider this so-called acyclic partitions, namely when we partition uh, within each partition, it could be a tree or a forest, but no cycle. And this is the, again, we can define this uh, ARH as the minimum number to achieve such a partition. Okay. And the independence number is the maximum size of an independent set in the graph. And uh, the L independence number will be the max size of the KL3 subset of vertices. But probably we will touch only very little about this L independence number, but we'll, we will focus on the independence number. Uh, so the main object we will look at will be the H tiling uh, which, or an H vector, where uh, H tiling is a collection of vertex disjoint subgraphs of G isomorphic to H. Uh, say when you have a triangle tiling, means just a bunch of triangles. And uh, such an H tiling is a, it's called an H factor if it covers all the vertices. This uh, implicitly asks that this, uh, uh, I think, I mean, uh, a divisibility condition, right? This order of the graphs must divide. Otherwise, there's no way to find such a H factor. Uh, there's no way for such a factor to exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I will uh, survey about this uh, results. And for that, uh, to do that, my n, variable n, always denotes the number of vertices of the host graph. And uh, also the, the desired uh, h will normally be a fixed graph and considered a small. Uh, first result in this direction will be the Dirac result on Hamiltonian cycles, uh, who proved uh, that back to 1952, uh, he proved that if delta G is at least n over two, uh, then G contains Hamiltonian cycle. And uh, a bit, uh, well, it's not a bit later, but in 1970, Heino and Samuelady proved that if delta G is at least one minus one over R times N, then the graph G has, uh, an, an, has a KR factor, uh, where the case article three was obtained previously by Karate and Heino. And uh, 
on this two, these first two results are for every n. Well, not for every n because uh, the second one requires a divisibility. Uh, but essentially, it's like for all possible n. Uh, but later, and when we depart from that, all later results need, require n to be sufficiently large. Only for large n. And the next one was uh, a result of Alon Euster, who, uh, who obtained result for arbitrary h factor. I mean, h factor for arbitrary h. And they proved that you uh, essentially, when you want to obtain, uh, obtain such a result, uh, the parameter you want to put there, if you compare it, uh, if you compare with, uh, compare it with the result for click factor, you have one minus one over r, and you should replace the r by chi of h, the chromatic number of h. And they found the correct parameter to use, and this is tight, uh, best possible, which means best possible uh, for balance the h. Uh, namely, when h has uh, the proper coloring of h, all proper colorings of h has uh, balanced parts. Um, again, uh, this is not tight for all h, and for all h, uh, this best possible condition was found uh, later, uh, I mean, 13 years later by Kuhn and Austus, and they determined the best possible degree condition. And uh, for such a condition, actually this chi star g, uh, chi star h uh, is, uh, is, is depend, sorry, it's either, uh, it's actually either chi of h or the critical chromatic number of h. But anyway, it's between chi of h minus one and chi of h. Uh, there's only two possible values and they determined the, Degree condition up to an additive constant. We will go. Uh, we will go to this uh, a little bit later. Uh, so this Kuhn Austus work kind of uh, put the period on this problem. Uh, but what do I do now, or what do I do? What else can we do? Uh, sorry, this is a, a summary. A summary of this list of results. Uh, in other words, I mean, namely, it's uh, optimal conditions uh, for uh for the objects hamiltonian cycle click factor uh balance stage and every h factor uh so here we come across to this uh, ramsey to run theory uh which was initialed by shosh uh Wela shosh, and uh, also later generalized by uh erdish heino shosh and zamredi uh this ramsey to run theory studies the maximum number of edges in a KR free graph with sublinear independence number. And this earlier results was obtained for this KR free result, but the, the, the actually uh, the values uh, depend on the parity of R, I mean the parity of the clique, of size of the clique, and there are two different numbers. I think the second one I rephrased a little bit, but just to uh, show you uh, what happens here, so it's kind of similar with what I just showed about the click factors or H factors. So all these functions look like one minus one over something there. Okay, so later we will introduce the factor problem under the Ramsey to run setting. And there also, we also try to fight for or look for the correct parameter that we put into there, namely like this. Is one minus one over something we will try to put there. Uh, this Ramsey to run tiling problem was initialized uh, by Balog, Mola, and uh, uh, sorry, Sherry Gadze. Uh, maybe Hong knows how to pronounce it better. Uh, sorry, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, they studied the problem for triangle factors and asked, of course, asked for the general. Can, uh, condition and they prove that for triangle factors you only need like n or two plus epsilon n uh, of course they need the the, uh, the host graph uh, to have sublinear independence number and such graph has a triangle factor and this is very nice because Heino Zamredi theorem says the minimum condition here the minimum degree condition here needs to be two n or three if there's no more 
uh, can be there if there's no assumption on alpha g. So this is a clear improvement and actually a lot. And they want for the general, uh, they want the general condition. Uh, uh, they want to find the general uh, condition for general uh, KR factor. And uh, uh, another quick remark is that this N or two there is asymptotically best possible uh, by taking the union of two destroying cliques. So you take two cliques and uh, uh, of almost equal size, uh, but you made them like not divisible by three. Uh, both of them. And then even though uh, and their cliques, and they definitely don't have large independent set. Actually, the maximum size of independent set is two. Uh, and uh, uh, they have a large minimum degree. It's like an order two minus two or something. Uh, but there's no way to find the triangle factor uh, since both sides are complete graphs, but none of them, none of them is, uh, neither of them is divisible by three. And there's no edge cross. Okay. So um, the problem was uh, reiterated and by Nenadov and Pelva, and uh, actually, uh, and then uh, Knirium and Su solved the problem uh, for the clique factors, but they also generalize it to the FL condition. Namely, what about uh, the, remember that, I mean, sorry, I defined that Alpha H is an independent, Alpha G is an independent number of G, but Alpha L of G is the maximum size of a, a set uh, without KL. And then they generalize the problem uh, for Alpha L condition. And Kanyeri uh, Mansu had actually uh, Nenadov and uh, Pelva, uh, Pelva gave this uh, construction for this quantity. And also uh, Knirim and Su reiterated and uh, actually uh, mentioned this as a problem explicitly. However, this quantity is not enough. Uh, in particular, what is wrong is here, is one half is kind of uh, uh, natural. It is very natural. It's actually just uh, correspond to the two clique constructions. Uh, but actually there could be a better construct, uh, there could be a better, there is a better construction that we found uh, together with the, our co-authors, actually, uh, we could put, we could reprove, I mean, replace this one half by a number strictly greater than one half, where in such graph, there could be some vertices, uh, not in any copy of KR. So certainly this is a, uh, such a graph cannot have a KR factor. And then we get with the improved the lower bound, we prove that our new uh, bound is actually also achievable, namely for such graphs, we can obtain the care factors, but that one we, we can only manage to do it uh, for L is large, L is at least uh, three R over four. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, kind of uh, out of the scope of this, not out of the scope, but that's not the main topic in this uh, talk. So I would just, uh, just skip the rest. Um, right, so again, this is the theorem obtained by Knierim and Su in 2020. Uh, they proved that this one minus two or R um, in degree uh, plus alpha G is less than equal to alpha N contains a KR factor. So again, I would like to rewrite it into the way we prefer. So it's one minus one over, and this key parameter here is uh, R over two. And this is good enough for KR factor. And what about H factor? We also would like to see uh, H factor for arbitrary H. And uh, uh, this is what we proved. Uh, well, we will say this is a long user type result. Uh, uh, actually, we put, we could put ARH there. Okay, um, right. So, uh, it, yeah, I, sorry, I should put these two results in the same 
page, uh, but on the same page. But yeah, we replace this R over two by ARH for arbitrary H. Um, right. And note that uh, here's a couple of remarks. Uh, the second term can be omitted. This one half thing can be omitted unless H uh, is a forest. And that is because this ARH is already uh, at least a two. So if ARH is at least a two, uh, certainly we can omit it. And what do I mean? Uh, but, but then what about if ARH equals one? ARH equals one means H is a forest, right? Uh, ARH is the smallest number of like partitions, sorry, smallest number of parts so that H has a basically partition, right? And uh, it equals one means H itself is a forest. And this is not interesting for the proper coloring for the chromatic number of K because if chi H equals one, it means just, it just means H has no edge at all. Uh, so, right. And unfortunately this, uh, this is not tight for odd clicks. So in somehow this even doesn't cover the uh, this canarium and the zoo result, right? Uh, but we will see, we will achieve it uh, later, a little bit later. Uh, and this is asymptotically sharp for many graphs, which we will try to describe next. Next. Okay. Uh, well, I, I didn't give any feeling about it. I just say I want to replace the N or two by ARH, right? But we will see what, how it pops up. Um, so for that, we will have to talk about uh, Quinn Alto's result about this uh, minimum degree condition for H factor. Okay, so uh, more concretely, uh, their result uh, actually has only two terms and they call it a dichotomy because it's either one over, sorry, one minus one over chi of H or one minus one over critical chromatic number, the chi CR of H. And they also characterize these two cases completely. And I don't, I mean, to ask you to read this whole paragraph, but it's just, just a way of defining this parameter HCF. And uh, what I will tell you is, uh, we want to follow exactly uh, their way of defining this uh, HCF uh, because we could actually lift out the uh, lift out this common uh, structure uh, as a function. We define HCL HCF of H together with the family of partitions, and uh, yeah, I should put this larger so. Just remember, um, only you only need to remember Kuhn out to define such a function, and then when it equals one and not, or it's not equal to one, namely bigger than one. This are this is the the economy they found, and if I let this calligraphic P equals P C, the proper coloring, all proper colorings of H uh, with uh, chi of H colors, namely the optimal proper colorings. And then the minimum degree condition uh, for uh, for this Quinn Austin's result, this condition is one minus one over chi h, if and only if this number is not one. Namely, uh, this one, this first one, is for HCF HPC equals one. Sorry, not equal one. Uh, and the second one is for equals one. That is exactly the dichotomy they found. And we will use the same thing. The, the exactly the same thing, except that we replace the partitions. Namely, they had this proper colorings and we will take this acyclic partitions. Let me stop writing here, but I'll show you on the next page. Um, let AP be the family of all acyclic partitions of H. And again, the optimal ones uh, with ARH part, namely the optimal acyclic partitions. And then uh, it's a, we have a proposition which proves the upper, uh, the, sorry, the lower bound, and uh, uh, which says our result is uh, our previous theorem, 
is asymptotically tight if uh, HCF uh, HAP is not one. So namely for such H, the mean degree condition is at least this much. So then it's asymptotically tight uh, uh, if and only if HCF HAP, this HCF function we, uh, we just defined is not one. Uh, again, this is not so perfect because uh, for all cycles, sorry, for all clicks, this HCF KRAP is exactly one. So it's not tight for that. Uh, but maybe more importantly, what should the other threshold be? Namely, uh, later we will post the, uh, we will put the, we have put the uh, con uh, conjecture in the paper that we do believe it is another dichotomy, which means this possible values, there are only, only two possible values for this mean degree condition. Uh, one is this we have obtained and the other is possibly smaller. And uh, anyway, uh, we believe or we guess, yeah, to be a little bit more conservative, uh, this should be achieved by this critical adversity of H and defined this way. Uh, where this ARH minus one times the order of H divided by order of H minus sigma of H, where sigma of H is the minimum size, is the minimum size of a part taken over all optimal acyclic repetitions of H. Namely, you, you exhibit all number of ways to um, partition the graph in the acyclic way, namely each part induces a uh, forest and then you exactly all possible ways and you write down the minimum size and that is the sigma of h. Uh, I, I don't think I give enough time for this problem, uh, sorry, for this part, but that's kind of a, uh, exactly, it follows exactly the way as a discussion and also exactly the motivation as in the graph tiling situation and in the kuhn Austo's work. Uh, I mean, this critical chromatic number was I think uh, first stated by uh, Komlosh. Um, and again, similarly by definition, this critical chromatic, uh, critical adversity is uh, strictly bigger than ARH minus one and at most ARH. Okay, so, um, right. So now we have kind of a, uh, sorry, right, right. Now we have uh, another lower bound, uh, which is one minus uh, one over ARH, ARCRH, -R -R and uh, I didn't show how to prove it, but this is a kind of a space barrier construction, uh, almost naive now, nowadays. Uh, so this is the, the other lower bound, and we proved that uh, we do not prove that this is tight. Uh, the, to prove it, this asymptotically upper bound will solve the problem completely, which we are not able to do it. Uh, that will right. That will establish a Kuhn-Austin theorem for this tiling part, but we are not able to do it yet. We only obtain our own user type, and at the moment we want to save ourselves from this out clicks. Uh, our first theorem didn't make it. And now we make it for out clicks uh, as follows. Uh, we define a special uh, family of graphs, uh, which in particular includes out clicks, uh, namely such, uh, such family uh, contains uh, graphs who have an uh, acyclic partition uh, where essentially uh, the first one is smaller. So T1 is smaller and the other RTIs are twice as, are twice as large as T1. So T1 is smaller, others are larger, TR. And, uh, and HT1 is independent. This is independent and that's it. Uh, that's it. I didn't ask uh, H, uh, this, this P is the, I didn't ask that the P is the unique uh, uh, acyclic partition or say this is the optimal acyclic partition. I mean, this is optimal. It's, I mean, optimal in the other sense, like 
So there could be a better way. I mean, the critical critical abrasivity could be smaller than that, but I'm not asking for that direction. I'm ask, I'm only saying if uh, for such age uh, in H tilde, uh, we can prove that uh, we can later, oh, sorry, we can further reduce this ARH there. Sorry, so by that I'm kind of marking down here. We can further reduce this ARH by ARH minus one half. Right. Uh, and uh, then we can still guarantee an H factor. Okay. And uh, if if they are a critical abrasive is even smaller, then maybe you can also you can further uh, reduce this uh, degree condition, but we, we don't know how to achieve it. Uh, but uh, anyway, so this is this will be sharp if this critical abrasivity equals exactly that. Uh, in particular, uh, odds clicks make it. Okay, uh, if H is, a, of course, uh, odd clicks are fine because for odd clicks, uh, the optimal partition is just uh, right. The optimal AC partition is just a, a single vertex along with a bunch of edges. So this is optimal aesthetic partition of all clicks. And certainly, certainly it, this is the only one, I mean, optimal one. So uh, ARCRH equals ARH minus one half. So this, we also recover this all the click result for like from Canarium and so. Anyway, this is, uh, this also provide a family of uh, results uh, of thresholds, uh, but also uh, the general lower bound we have is here, this one minus one over ARCRH. So in summary, uh, we believe uh, this is enough for uh, H such that HCF uh, HAP equals one, okay? So if this H, if this HCF function is not one, then this right code is one minus one over ARH, uh, which we have done, which is done, we, we have proved it. And so for the only case that the, the, the threshold is actually smaller, Right, it's only possibly smaller, and then that case we will we make conjecture. So you could make it replaced by a smaller number. Okay. Anyway, this is not blur, and I don't think anything is crystal crystal clear. But uh, right, uh, let's give a little. I think I have five minutes, uh, maybe more, uh, six minutes, and uh, I will give a, a small piece of uh, like. A part of the proof and see how it works. So one sentence summary, uh, we use the absorption method. Uh, we'll find the absorbing set and construct an almost perfect edge tiling out of it uh, without the absorbing set and then absorb the leftover of this edge tiling. Uh, uh, bending on the, uh, leaning on the uh, uh, constant hierarchy, so this will work. And uh, for step one, we use a lattice based absor absorption method. And as for step two, uh, we use the regularity method and the fractional KR tilings argument, but actually recently developed by Canarium and Su. Uh, but right, so after giving that, so uh, what do we have besides this, right? Uh, because this lattice based absorption method, people may say this is already known. And the second one, I'm clearly saying I'm using arguments or I mean tools from somebody else. So what do we have? Uh, what do we have uh, is actually from this uh, simple fact, not fact, the simple need that we, uh, yeah, the simple part that we need in our proof. Uh, namely, we need to embed a graph with ERF equals two into a regular pair with density at least one half. Um, namely, uh, we would like to embed like two trees, for example, like this, and then make it a complete graph. 
uh, sorry, make the bipartite part uh, complete. But this is what we want to do. Oh, sorry, what we need to do because we are dealing with H factors for arbitrary H. But in contrast, this job is a kind of much easier for the work of Kinnerim and Su because they only need to deal with, um, sorry, they only deal with click factors. And in their situation, this boils down to a K4, to a copy of K4. Uh, this is, again, this is only achievable if the density is greater than one half. If it's smaller than one half, then by the uh, construction, celebrated construction of uh, Bolabash and Erdish, uh, this is not possible. And when the density is bigger than one half, it's easy to do it. Uh, you uh, kill, uh, you remove the small degree vertices remove vertices with small degree. A small degree means less than one half uh, plus epsilon. And then with the vertices only have high degree, then you find that you can draw an edge from the off condition. You can find an edge where both of them have large degree to the other side and definitely they have a large intersection. And within the intersection, you call the help of alpha G and you get your other edge. You get the other edge and now you get a K4. K4, I see my picture like this. Uh, is this clear? Right, so they do this. I mean, this is easy. And you may ask, what about if I want K5, K6? Uh, certainly K5 doesn't fit in uh, by part graph now, even with the sub, uh, sublinear independence number. For K5 or K6, you certainly need three parts, like regular triples. Uh, but now we may we deal with non-complete graphs, and uh, we may need to deal with this. Mm. In bad, like tree times tree in regular pair. Of course, with high density. Again, if with the same density, I mean, it definitely it induces uh, a, a K4. So if density, if density is smaller than one half, you can make it. Okay, so what do we do? How, how do we uh, achieve it? Uh, a regular pair with density more than one half. Uh, actually, it is possible to do it with the star versus a tree is essentially following the same uh, argument. Namely, again, you remove the low degree vertices. Low degree, you remove it. And then because, your, because of your independence number, uh, you can uh, find a huge star find a huge star because of independence number. Actually, because they have linearly many, uh, it's enough, uh, sorry, for this alpha G equals little of N, you can call a result of it like say, for example, Spencer, you can prove that this G on this V1, let me call this V1, V2, uh, you have a large like uh, number of uh, edges, linear number of edges. And by early show, it contains uh, you don't need a strong number of early short conjecture. You just need, let's say, large stars. You can find a large star. And among the large stars, uh, each of them, because you have deleted low degree vertices, right? So each of them has a large uh, neighborhood to the other side. And then among that, you can, it's easy to find the common intersections, not for all of them, but for a large number of them. Namely, after you get a star of certain size where they have a large common intersection and you re retrieve, you can find the other tree there. You can find a tree there and that finishes star times tree. Uh, but for general tree times tree, it took us 
quite some time until we found this older reference. I mean, probably it's the same reference, early China, Shosha, and Zamredi. Uh, they had a lemma to deal with it. Uh, this is inductive proof. Uh, I don't want you to read the statement either, uh, but essentially they said, when you try to build a tree uh, on, the, on the left-hand side, you can do it. Uh, the proof was by induction and uh, the full power of the lemma actually, I mean, also allows us to embed multiple parts. So now just give you a feeling uh, when you have multiple parts, um, uh, if this part is, the density is more than one half, you can embed three times three, three times three. But then for, for example, if this density is less than one half, you can embed three times independent set. And if this part is again at about one half, then you can embed a tree. And this is essentially how it works, how we find our age uh, in optimal, uh, uh, with optimal acidic partition into this uh, regular k-tuples or regular r-tuples. I think that's it. I, maybe I'm over time, but uh, anyway, thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. So let's first thank uh, Jeff for the nice talk. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so um, you may unmute yourself if you have questions.